Hello and welcome to Very Necessary. I'm Melissa Hemsley. I'm a chef, food writer and food activist. And I'm here to bring you the stories behind the objects that we just can't live without. I'll be finding out how they've evolved and just why they mean so much to us. But I won't be doing it alone. Each episode, I'm joined by guests to choose their very necessary object. And today, I'm delighted to welcome the absolutely brilliant Vic Hope. Vic has reported behind the scenes on almost every reality TV show, from The Voice to I'm a Celebrity, she's danced on Strictly, and she's presented London's Capital Breakfast Show. She's written a children's book too. She speaks four languages, and she's super passionate about refugees' rights. Hello, Vic. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on here. It's really nice to speak to you. I've been looking forward to this so much and I'm so excited. I won't say exactly what your object is yet, but um, it's been really wonderful taking a deep dive into it. What's been going on with you? What have you been up to? I I I feel a bit sort of conflicted about saying this, but I've been really busy, which feels wrong given the circumstance and the times that we're living in. But um I think that with with our industry, it sort of stopped at the first lockdown and everyone was like, how are we going to deal with this? And once they worked out how to do it and how to do it safely, they were like, let's fill in the gap. So <laughs> we've just been working kind of nonstop, um, but it's good and I feel very grateful. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good at the moment. I'm curious today, especially, is to talk about how you find your headspace in and amongst all of this and how you find your chill moments because... Am I right in thinking you don't, (laughs) there's no nine to five when it comes to what you do. It could be 5am wake ups, late ones. I think this is why you might love your very necessary objects. So do you want (laughs) to tell us, give us the big reveal? You are so right. My very, very necessary object is my headphones, which are genuinely, the more I think about it, when you first sent me that email saying, what, what would it be? I was like, oh, it's my headphones. And I, I hadn't really properly thought about just how very necessary they are, but I, I couldn't live without them. I don't know what I'd do on a day to day. No, you're, you're completely right. I, there is no structure to my life whatsoever. At the moment, I'm working um, on a show where I rap every night at midnight. Um, and then you're so full of adrenaline that you, you can't get to sleep until at least two or three in the morning. Um, and my way of unwinding is to listen to music, which I think is the, the case for a lot of people. Um, then my way of amping myself back up is to go for a walk or to go for a run, which I need to listen to music to do. Um, or actually I, I use, um, I use, there's a couple of apps that provide me with, with meditation while I run or some like some guidance and some coaching. Um, again, I need my headphones for that. And I, I think I just feel so lost without them. I, 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 music is my solace. It's my joy. I think the greatest joy in life is to get lost in a, in a beautiful song or, or a song that just that takes you to another place. I hear you so much when you say the word solace, both solace and joy. I, I too, like until you wrote, wrote us back, I, I hadn't given my headphones a second thought, really. Um, and now I think between probably the ages of eight and 14, probably till 16, I think having headphones was top of my Christmas and birthday list. It was always the thing that I was really felt like a grown up gift or like a really treasured object. When did you get your first pair of headphones? Yeah, probably about the same. I remember I got um, a Walkman. Well, you know, the one of those CD Walkmans? Yeah. Um, and I had a pair of those headphones that were foamy with the metal. And they, <laughs> they're a terrible fit and they're not comfortable, but they, they, they were just the headphones. But I had s- several CDs. Um, there was Jet, there was Coldplay, there was Travis, there was Snow Patrol, and there was Get Cape, Wear Cape, Fly. <laughs> I love the indie music. <laughs> I would just walk around with this Walkman plugged into my headphones just soaking it in, literally like a, like the sponge of those weird old headphones. And I, I, I just loved it. I loved it so, so much. So that was probably my, my first player. And obviously they've progressed since then. I like how you said um, uh, you were soaking up the music. I, I think about, you know, my great deep love of Ronan Keating, uh, it's, it, which still lives on today. And I think the headphones, you know, I could I could totally not be in Surbiton uh, in the ni- early 1990s. I was with Ronan in Ireland, you know, cliff water crashing. Um, <laughs> and I, I wouldn't have been able to get that all encompassing feel without the headphones.
Now, to tell us about the secret life of headphones, I've got to introduce someone very special, an amazing woman, Kat Summers, Very Necessary's own head of stories. She has been digging deep for us into the history of headphones. Welcome, Kat. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Vic. Hi. I'm so excited. Head of stories. Yes. (laughs) When you said headphones, I felt the same way, just a lowly pair of headphones. But then I realised I must have five or six sets at home. And it's been so interesting. I mean, they're everywhere now, just as you and Vic were discussing. But believe it or not, there was a time when wearing headphones was illegal. In 1982, in one particular place in America, crossing the road with headphones on could get you a $50 fine and 15 days in jail. The first person to fall foul of this new law was one Oscar Gross, a 64-year-old retired retail consultant who served in World War II and who then lived in New Jersey in a quiet community about 30 miles south of New York City, not bothering anyone. I found a picture of Oscar and he's a kind of short, stocky guy in a check shirt. And in the photo, he's got a wire snaking down his chest and a pair of headphones clamped to his ears. Just like the ones that Vic described, right? Exactly. He's a pretty normal looking guy. He doesn't look like your average freedom fighter, let's say that. But that's exactly what he was trying to be. Okay, Kat, you've got us hooked. Over to you. Now tell us how and why Oscar Gross fought for our rights to wear headphones. So, in the photo I just mentioned, Oscar is standing behind a tall police officer called Sergeant Lou Monzo. And that's because on the 7th of October 1982, the day this new law came into effect, Oscar, our hero, had strolled up to Sergeant Monzo, put on his son's headphones and walked across the road. Now, before I get on to what happened next... And to understand how we got there, we need to wheel back three years to 1979 and the release of the Sony Walkman. You've already mentioned it as a a thing, so you clearly remember those, um, Vic. But for those who don't remember, the Walkman was the world's first truly portable cassette player. The Walkman wasn't the first pair of headphones by any means. The earliest date all the way back to the 1890s, and they were built for the US Navy and telephone operators. They were great big bulky things that weighed a ton, well, like five kilos, and often gave the wearer electric shocks. Then in 1910, a guy called Nathaniel Baldwin had the bright idea of connecting two earphones with a strap that goes over your head. So they started to kind of look like headphones as we wear them now. Until then, they'd been held up with a stick or there'd only been one earphone that you held to one ear. In 1958, well, that's 50 years after Nathaniel I was just talking about, and about 50 years before Dr. Dre would put his name to beats, a jazz musician called John C. Coss invented the first stereo headphones. And if you're wearing headphones now, stereo sound means I can whisper into your right ear and shout into your left. After that, over the years, headphones would become more and more sophisticated, but a pair could still weigh as much as a kilogram. And that's a bag of sugar wrapped around your head. So the Wartman's real innovation wasn't its tiny portable cassette player, although technically that was pretty cool. It was the flimsy foam covered headphones, Vic, that you mentioned earlier, because they weighed only 45 grams. And that meant for the first time, you could leave your house with headphones on. Really feel the music with the Sony Walkman. The Sony Walkman is a tiny stereo cassette player with truly incredible sound. Put on a Walkman and see the world in a whole new light. Sony Walkman. The Walkman from Sony, the one and only. So that advert is from 1981, a couple of years after the Walkman first came onto the market. And it, it, I mean, it's pure 1981 injected into your veins. It's just, I was only one in 1981, but I promise you it sounded like that all the time. Um, And suddenly the Walkman meant you could listen to music on the move. You had your very own bubble of sound, a great distraction from the busy world around you, and it could alleviate the sheer boredom of getting around. And the Walkman was hugely popular as a result. In the first 10 years the Walkman was on sale, over 50 million units were sold. Not everyone was excited though. Some were worried about how safe these headphones were, from the damage they might do to your hearing, to whether someone wearing them could hear a car when crossing the road. And other people had 
bigger concerns. They believed listening to your own sound that no one else could hear would lead to problems for society in general. This idea of you know, individual entertainment is something we take for granted now, but what with like laptops and smartphones. But back then, it was seen as another symptom on the individualistic age being ushered in by Reagan and Thatcher. People only looking out for themselves, the breakdown of the social fabric, that kind of thing. So the Walkman with its portable headphones was really the first device of the so-called me generation, decades before we'd get our hands on selfie sticks. And there was a full-blown tech panic of the kind we've seen more recently with video games or smartphones or even selfies. One headline said, headsets tune out life itself. Uh, and the headphones the critics were totally convinced would lead to a world of silence and social isolation. It got so bad, headphones were actually banned in some places. So in America, states like Louisiana, Alaska and California made it illegal for drivers to wear them. But authorities in Woodbridge Township in New Jersey went one step further. And there, anyone caught wearing headphones while riding a bike or walking across the road could be punished with a fine and up to 15 days in jail. And our hero, Oscar Gross, was outraged. The way he saw it, not being able to wear headphones was a breach of his civil liberties, even unconstitutional. So on the day the new law was enforced, he'd set out to test it. His headphones weren't even plugged in. They just dangled <laughs> down his chest. <laughs> but wearing them was enough and his arrest made local and national news. He told one reporter, I'm prepared to go to jail for 15 days just to prove a point. And the judge fined Oscar $50, but he didn't send him to jail, much to Oscar's dismay. Oscar didn't let that lie. He was determined to campaign for his right to wear headphones and spent the next year drafting all the legal paperwork on his own. He was ready to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. He believed headphones were worth fighting for. And most people now would agree. Using something like headphones and a Walkman, for example, or iPod or anything, allows you to regain possession of that time and make it more pleasurable. So this is Dr. Michael Bull, Professor of Sound Studies at the University of Sussex, although he's also known as... Professor iPod, if you prefer. <laughs> he's interviewed hundreds of people as part of his work on the social effects of mobile listening devices like the Walkman and the iPod, including one guy who used his Walkman to transform his daily commute to the office. This chap, he used the same tape every day for months, and he calibrated his journey to the music. So he would say, well, I need this track to get up the stairs at Green Park Tube Station. So it was totally controlled. And then he would only take the headphones off as he walked into his office. I love this idea, like turning your commute into an adventure with its very own soundtrack. So headphones help us manage all the contingencies of the real world, all the things we have no control over, like people having loud conversations on the bus or noisy roadworks, or the number of steps from the platform to the outside world. Back in the day, people had to read or meditate to create a world in their head. Now we can simply slip on a pair of headphones. They just help us feel more in control, like we've got a say over our environment. Quite a lot of women, would say that they felt uncomfortable, sometimes in close proximity to other people staring at them. And so if they had the headphones on, they felt that actually they weren't receiving the gaze of the other person. So it, they felt empowered because of that. Looked at like that, headphones become a kind of form of protection, like a shield. This was demonstrated a few years ago when a dating blogger called Dan Bacon provoked an uproar by suggesting the best way to chat up a woman wearing headphones. The, the internet, as it often does, kind of reacted with its usual understatement and reserve. But yeah, he, he kind of gave tips for guys how to approach a woman wearing headphones and what to do to get her to take them off and talk to him. And, and, and if not sexist, then his advice was at least pretty tone deaf to the fact that women often report receiving unwelcome advances and attention. And however genuine your attentions may be, it's just not a good idea to approach anyone like this. So this, this huge Ferrari happened on the internet and just showing that 
Dan had missed a crucial aspect of headphones, that sometimes people wear them as a signal they don't want to be approached or disturbed. Anyway, back to Oscar. Since his arrest, he'd spent months putting together a case that would prove the ban on headphones in Woodbridge Township was unconstitutional. But before one of his court dates, a 15-year-old boy in a nearby town was killed when he walked into traffic wearing his Walkman. Oscar dropped his appeal and ended up praising the ban. 40 years since their arrival on the scene, portable headphones are still divisive. They give us a lot, but there are still even calls for them to be banned even now. Some people refuse to wear them, like those kids who play their music out loud on the bus, or my personal pet peeve, grown adults watching YouTube. Or there's even those guys, I feel like every town has them. There's these guys who walk around with music blaring from their speakers, carrying speakers around, blaring music out, or, or even old fashioned like ghetto blasters. Do they want attention or is it like a protest? Or maybe just they really like this song. And maybe it's just as simple as they just want us to listen to the same thing as them. In a time when we're all cut off from each other and listening to our own thing, that's kind of nice. Maybe rather than being inconsiderate, they're actually wanting to bring us all back together. <laughs> but I, I like to think of these guys as kind of advocates for a bygone age when we all listen to the same thing at the same time. Maybe that's pushing it a bit, but I do. Oh, there she is, it's Queen. Mwah. Queen, how are you? I'm fine. See, you are fine and you have no problem. Last time you seemed so weak and you didn't do the Kinyaranda exam that we had. Hmm? How did it end? Tell us, the director came to you? Sure, the director came to me where I was sitting and he asked me what had happened. And I told him I had a headache. Oh, I thought you didn't tell him the truth. Imagine if you had told him that you had periods. Ah, no, listen, I'm still speaking. So, how did it end? Then he continued pleading, ask, asking me what happened. I told him I had periods. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. This is Isoko Yubizima, a radio drama made through a partnership between Water Aid and Radio Ishingiro in Rwanda. Did you tell him that you had periods? Yes, of course. Muto, is anything crazy? Even it shows that radio and communal listening can be a real lifesaver. By following what happens to characters like Agasaro and Mani, listeners learn vital information about hygiene, especially when it comes to period health, as well as enjoying the tense situations of a drama. And what's more, people are much more likely to discuss an enjoyable story with each other than read a long list of information. And of course, if anything has showed that deep down we still crave shared experiences, then it's the current pandemic. We're desperate to be in the same room again, listening and watching things together. So maybe those early Walkman critics had a point. Or maybe that's just me and my rose-tinted specs again, and that bygone age never existed. Living in lockdown means many of us aren't commuting or getting around like we used to. And in some ways that's good, it saves us time. But I've realized how much I miss those journeys and my headphones. That hour or so of my day was a time I could really reflect and be on my own, lost in a cocoon of sound. Here's one last point from Michael Bull, AKA Professor iPod. It's about the public spaces we congregate in or used to in the years BC, that's before COVID. He points out how isolating they can be, not the other way around. The use of the headphones is, is a kind of uh, response actually, I think, to lots of social spaces not being that nice for people or commutes you know you can't say that a commute for most people is very pleasant and so what better way to fill it with music or now with podcasts a final word on oscar he died in 1984 not long after he took his stand for our right to wear headphones and since then no one has been convicted for wearing them in woodbridge township but the law banning them is still on the books Oh, cat! amazing. That's amazing. I, <laughs> I love that. What a, a, a whistle-stop tour through headphone history. Thank you so much, Kat. <laughs> That's oh okay. My God. I've got a lot of questions. Vic, have you got questions? Yeah, I, I, I guess I guess it makes perfect sense that, that they have been banned in certain places and that they're seen as a danger because they are. How many times I've, I have been so lost in my own cocoon that I've walked out into traffic or I actually even... It was a couple of months ago, but I got I got really told off because 
face masks, the, the combination of face masks, headphones, sunglasses. This is back when it was quite sunny still. It, your whole face, your whole head is covered. You're completely anonymous and you're completely cut off from the outside world. And I didn't realize that I was going up the way you're supposed to go down in a, in a train station. And the, the guard was shouting at me, screaming at me, and I had no idea. And it wasn't until I got to the top and he was like, right in my face. Like, and he said, you need to take your headphones off. And he clearly hated people wearing headphones because he has to deal with them every day, be completely noise cancelling, completely oblivious to what's going on around them. And he was like, I've been shouting at you for at least a minute and you had no idea. And it, that was probably the first time I realised just how much you are cocooned. And I, the face masks and everything, it, it, it adds to that. It was very interesting for me, the bit about protection. I, I do find that those big sounds and there is a real angst and stress and bustle on the tube and I'm quite a sensitive person or if I'm having a particularly sensitive time um I can feel my heart I mean I find I find city life quite heart racing anyway so maybe the headphone goes on and 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 if I really think about it sometimes I need to think but I put the headphone on anyway just to sort of make a cut off between me and someone else but you know I I sort of reserve that for for the train Vic I remember once I've seen you say something about how you have different playlists for like going to the supermarket versus walking through a particular part. Yeah, I'm like, I'm soundtracking every part of my day. I am a massive music video fan and that's the way to make yourself feel like you're in a music video, isn't it? You're right, every experience can be enhanced and can become a music video. And doesn't that make buying Lou Roll so much more exciting? It's emotional, it's sexy. And I'm literally just buying pasta and Lou Roll, but that experience, which could be quite mundane and quite quotidian, all of a sudden becomes so exciting. Music just, it changes everything the other day i uh i chucked my headphones on because my boyfriend was doing a massive zoom of some kind and i started making a bolognese right and you want that to simmer along for like four hours and i put on some ennio morricone on my uh on my headset and it just made you know the garlic it made the garlic smell more garlicky it made the tomato yes. sauce sweeter it was just <laughs> such a wonderful thing cat when you talked about craving a shared experience I thought was mm. interesting because I was remembering a couple of, you remember when like you're just walking around the city or walking somewhere and it's probably happened to us lots in our lives. You see maybe a kid like lifting up their headset to share it with another kid or you see two lovers and you just, I I totally get got what you meant when you said craving a shared experience. If you're having a wonderful time or a piece of music is speaking to you and then you lift up that piece, that headset and share it with someone, that's so special. It's like, sh yeah, it's like sharing a gorgeous meal. I went through years and years of my life where I just didn't have headphones, like I didn't have a pair um, and I never really missed them. And I guess I had more shared experiences on a daily basis. I was in a relationship, like I was in relationships for about 10 years. Those 10 years, I wasn't a big headphone user and it wasn't until I was single again that I went and got a good pair of headphones because all of a sudden I became acutely aware of time alone that I hadn't been a, aware of, but be experiencing for a decade. And it was like the, the resurgence of the headphone in my life. And I do crave shared experience because I think it's so important, but I was necessarily put in a position where I was having less of that on a daily basis. Because when you're, when you're single and you live alone, you, you've just got a lot more time on your hands to, to be inside that bubble. And I, I needed an accompaniment because that accompaniment wasn't in the form of another human being. So it, it, it something, music took its place, took his place. <laughs> <laughs> in a way. Someone said headsets tune out life itself. This was some of the backlash against them. Someone said that, didn't they? And I mm. see what they mean, ish. That was that was a headline uh, from the early 80s and that era, people were so shocked by the sight of seeing people walking around with headphones and not just shocked, but affronted because they're not, they're, they're conspicuously not listening to them. I suppose there, there is that argument that by blocking out the sort of the noisy drill that someone's using or the, the things we do want to block out, you're also blocking out lots of opportunities and, and, and um, things that you might not miss. And Vic, when you have got your headphones on and you're on a long haul flight or a journey to somewhere, um, I know you do lots of refugee work um, and human rights. When you're packing for a trip or somewhere that you know is going to be highly emotional and sensitive and so on. Uh, how important are your headphones and what you're listening to to sort of get you in the right frame of mind? Um, yeah, getting in the right frame of mind is exactly right, but also winding down when 
you need to not be thinking. It's funny because music can at once help you focus and also help you escape. Um, and it, it sort of depends on how you go into it. I, I think, I think sometimes like, uh, for instance, even just, even just today, like I, I'm, I'm doing casework with um, a few refugee families in, in Hackney who are going through a very difficult time at the moment. And, um, I get upset. I get, I get, I get stressed out. We've had a couple of incidents even in the last week that have been, um, horrific, like really difficult. And it's, yeah, it's obviously it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not me, but it's, it, it, you know, you, you tr you're trying to help. You're trying to do what you can. Um, and there's only so much that you can do. And when, when that hits home, sometimes you do just need to switch off from it. And um, certainly when you're traveling, like even more so because you're away from the people that you love. And Kat, the, the show that we heard, um, the show that you mentioned, uh, about, uh, the radio drama from Rwanda, uh, specifically talking about young women, periods, how important it was for the messaging to be given over the airwaves. And obviously, in, uh, subjects that some people fi might find sensitive or embarrassing, it can really come across very well, can't they, on radio? Yeah, it just, uh, it, it means it's not sort of it's not information that's being forced down your throat. The radio drama is called Ahsoka Yubuzima and uh, it goes out on Radio Ishingiru in Rwanda, like you said. And it just, uh, it means that you're following, uh, it's not just sort of in bland information that's just read out in a list. It's actually, you you get to see it as part of a character drama. So characters that where this is really happening to them that may or may, ne may not reflect your experience. And it, uh, it really, I think, makes more of an impact when you, you, you learn new information as part of a drama and a story involving characters that you can really get behind. On the radio point, I guess, um, yeah, I, I, my, I know that in... Back in Nigeria, where my where my mum is from, all of my family they they gather around the radio, and that that communal um, listening experience is so important. It is so, it's such an important part of the fabric of of family life, of daily life. And since my mum came over to the UK, I think what she misses the most about Nigeria is the the sense of community um, that is so imbued in our culture, like the sense of togetherness. The idea of headphones it feels so alien to the culture and to the way of life that I know. And I think it's that reason um, everyone does gather around the radio to listen, whether it's educational programmes, whether it's basically Nollywood on the radio, um, or whether it's music. Um, and that's something that she's brought with her to Newcastle. Every time I'm on the radio now, ever since I started working in it, mum gets the whole family in the kitchen to gather around and listen. <laughs> which is extremely unnecessary and quite embarrassing but that's that's how she likes to do things that's how she likes to listen my mum doesn't use headphones she is she's all about everyone doing everything together I I also don't think I've ever seen my mum wear a pair of headphones and she's 70 something from the Philippines maybe yeah maybe it was something she just well I know she didn't grow up with it and it's interesting that she's not adopted it now thank you so much for joining us we have run out of time on the history of headphones, the very necessary object that Vic Hope picked for us. Well, you didn't pick it, it sort of picked you, didn't it? Headphones picked you. <laughs> <laughs> the headphones picked me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vic, thank you so much for joining us. And did you find thank it interesting? You. I Yeah, I feel like I've learned so much about headphones and it's just, it's just fascinating. That, and I, I guess I never thought that there is any negative to being so surrounded and circled and encompassed in, in in your music your entertainment but actually there is and that's something that that I think has a a deeper cultural significance um as you can see from from its history but yeah it's nice to talk about headphones I feel like I've learned a lot so thank you so much Kat and thank you so much for having me Melissa oh thanks Vic cheers also a big thank you to Professor Michael Bull from the University of Sussex very Necessary is brought to you by WaterAid, a charity working worldwide to make sure everyone, everywhere, has clean water, decent toilets and good hygiene. If you'd like to find out more about what WaterAid does, like their work with Radio Ishinguru supporting community hygiene, visit wateraid.org or follow the link in the episode description. I'm Melissa Hemsley and thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Very Necessary is a Water Aid and Story Things production.